In this video, I'll demonstrate how I slip cast in Scrofita one of my cow skulls, as I have done with this one. For this, I will need a couple basic supplies. Porcelain slip, a fine mesh strainer, a rubber spatula, a plaster mold, some large rubber bands, a bowl, a pitcher, and a dish pan. The first thing I'm going to do is assemble my plaster mold. First, I will align the pieces together and then I will secure them with the rubber bands. I created this plaster mold from a hand sculpted cow skull that I made. The next thing I will do is fill the cracks along the seams using some polymer clay. This will prevent the slip from leaking out. Now my mold is ready. Next, I will prepare the slip. It is important that the slip is well mixed. I like to gently roll the bottle back and forth on its side, and then I will stir it with the rubber spatula. It is important to avoid making air bubbles when you do this, because that can cause problems in the firing process. Once my slip is mixed, I will pour some into the pitcher using the fine mesh strainer to catch any unwanted chunks. Now I will pour the slip into the plaster mold. The weather will determine how long I let the slip set in the mold. If it is hot and dry, I might try 20 minutes, but if it's cold and damp, I will keep it setting for twice as long. This is because the plaster acts like a sponge absorbing the liquid from the slip. Since it has been cool and damp, I will leave the slip for 40 minutes. Now that 40 minutes has passed, I will pour out the slip. I do this by rotating the mold while upside down to get an even layer of slip along the inside, which will help keep the thickness consistent. Once it has mostly come out, I will set the mold upside down over the pitcher for about 15 minutes to avoid any slip from pooling inside. Now I will wait for two to three days to let the clay set up before removing it from the mold. Now that three days have passed, I will now remove the skull from the mold. First, I will remove the polymer clay that I used to seal the cracks along the seams. Next, I will carefully remove the rubber bands. And now I can remove the plaster mold. At this point, I will cut out the back of the skull with a fettling knife. I will place some wedges I made out of polymer clay to support the horns and cover the skull with plastic to keep it from drying out.
Now it is time to clean up the skull. Using a trimming tool, I will scrape and carve the clay until it is mostly smooth. I find this step to be very satisfying. Then using a sponge and some water, I can rehydrate the slip to then smooth the surface. Once I'm satisfied, I will add my maker's mark to the back. When the surface is dry to the touch, I will apply my underglaze. Using a soft fan brush, I liberally apply the underglaze, trying to make it as even as possible. I will apply two to three coats, allowing it to fully dry between coats. Then I will cover it with plastic to set aside until I'm ready to continue working on it.
Here's a photo that I took of a hibiscus plant growing in my backyard. I have chosen this as my reference for this next step where I will sgraffito my design. Using a carving tool, I first map out where I want to put my design by making small marks. From there, I will begin sketching in the contours of my design. Next, I will begin to fill in the gradations from light to dark while using a soft, dry fan brush to gently sweep the crumbs off the surface as I work. With a large trimming tool, I'll carve out some highlights. Once I'm finished with my design, I will set it out for the clay to dry completely before having it bisque fired.